Hello friends. I'm gonna attempt to do a reading vlog for the Disability Readathon. We'll see how it goes. The last vlog that I filmed, I never posted. I actually ended up just getting rid of it. So we'll see if this one goes better. If not, you won't even know that I attempted it anyway. The first book I'm gonna be reading this month is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones because it's my turn at the library to read it. So I got it while it was available. This, it follows Wren and her siblings, plus another boy who just recently came to town, Ellis. Wren and her siblings are orphaned and they live in a very small village. And Wren has taken over her father's job as the local grave digger. But the funny thing about the dead in Colburn, their village, is that they don't tend to stay dead. <laughs> so the dead who are buried outside of Colburn, outside of iron fences, rise and these walking corpses they call bone houses. And it's up to Wren and this new boy to kind of figure out what's going on and how to stop it. I'm going to start this book and of course as a reading vlog goes, I will update you when I have something to update you on. I am about a little over 100 pages into The Bone Houses and I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. It was slow going at first, not because of the story, but I'm reading it through the library and usually when I get an ebook from the library, I always have them send it to my Kindle because I hate reading on shiny screens, especially tiny shiny screens like my phone, but they didn't have the Kindle version of this one. And so if I'm going to read it from the library, I have to read it through their app because they also don't have a physical copy or I would have picked it up. So it's slow going because of that. But then I remembered that I have an iPad, which has apps. So I downloaded the Libby app on my iPad and while it's still a shiny screen, it's a bigger shiny screen, which does make it a little bit better. The story itself, I have been enjoying. Uh, it Parts of it really remind me of a fairy tale, not a specific fairy tale, but just the feeling of the story and the surroundings and the writing of it especially when they are talking about the magic in this world or how the magic came to be or how they think the magic came to be based on stories that have been passed down through generations of the past when magic was a part of everyday life. So in that it's very fairy tale-esque and I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. Things only just now kind of are starting to build up and take off. So far, it's just been kind of setting up the world and the characters and sort of the basic plot, I guess. I'm still not exactly sure where the story is going to go. I just know that there are dead bodies walking around and now we're going out into the world to try and stop them or do something about it. So that's where I am right now. And I've already read for about an hour, a little over an hour today. So I think I'm actually going to do something about these nails because I have leftover polish still left on them from several weeks ago. I really need to get it taken off and maybe I'll do something with them. Hello. I haven't read anything at all today. I actually filmed my TBR. I noted this backwards started the vlog before I made my TBR, but it works out that way sometimes. So I haven't read anything today and I'm actually just sitting here watching Buffy because I'm home alone on this Good Friday. Tomorrow, Saturday, the day before Easter, we're actually going to be doing a small get together um, down in Georgia. We're going to meet with a small amount of family. Uh, just so you know that more than half the people, myself included, are fully vaccinated. So, and we're having it outside 
and it's nowhere near the size of our normal family get-togethers by any means. But it'll be the first time, the first holiday we've gotten together since Christmas 2019, I guess. So there's that. So I imagine I won't be reading much tomorrow either, but maybe Sunday. So anyway, I'm going to get back to Buffy. characters, Ellis, is disabled. He acquired his disability through some kind of injury in his shoulder. I just wanted to read this little section. It really doesn't have anything to do with the story, so it's not a spoiler of any kind, but it's true, all of it. So just, so they're in the woods, just to set it up, they're in the woods and uh, Ren just learned that he's injured and so she asks, you could have told me before, and he says, to tell people is to invite pity, or worse, advice. Advice? Herbs to try, he said, stretches, leeches one time. People cannot simply let me be. They have to find a way to fix me. You're not broken, she said. I know, he said, but it's difficult to convince the world of that most of the time. That's why I've enjoyed solitude. People think pain makes me weak, or worse, strong. If I have to endure one more person telling me that I'm so strong simply for living, he shook his head. So, just wanted to share that little tidbit because relate all the way. I finished The Bone Houses last night. Overall, I'd say it was maybe a four-star read. I didn't absolutely love it, but I did enjoy it. So four stars. I do really like that it's a standalone, which we really don't get very much of in fantasies. You know, normally there are 15 book series in fantasies. So it is nice to be able to start and stop a complete story within a single book. So that was, that's really nice. The pace of the whole book was pretty slow, even though there was a whole lot of action. There are a lot of action scenes, fighting scenes, you know, escape scenes, things like that. But the progress of the story was a, a slow pace. And I didn't really mind it with this one. Normally I read more medium to fast paced books, but this one, it worked well with the story. Again, with it being that sort of fairy tale vibe, which stayed the whole time, it was nice to kind of take it slow and make it feel even more like a fairy tale. I did find myself kind of having to make myself pick it up. I didn't quite want to get back to it every day, but once I was reading it, I did enjoy it, so I really don't know why that was. I think a lot of it had to do with that I was reading it on my iPad, which I don't prefer to do, so I don't think that had anything to do with the actual story. I think that was just my personal preference. As I said, I really did enjoy it overall, so good to go. Up next, I'm going to read my children's book. I'm going to start it today and probably finish it today. Like I said, it's only about 24 pages long, but it's Cinderella's Magical Wheelchair, and I'm sure I'll be back in about 20 minutes to let you know how it goes. <laughs> okay, well, welcome to spring because the neighbors are cutting grass. <laughs> Maybe that won't be too loud for you. So I lied. It did not take me 20 minutes. It took me 13 minutes. <laughs> and so I just finished it. It was not, I mean, I, I don't, 
it was a children's book, so I wasn't particularly satisf satisfied with it, but it it's not meant for me, so, you know, it was pretty much just typical Cinderella story. I will say that it, it was a little bit different in that it's more girl power centered, maybe, because Cinderella didn't end up relying on the prince to save her from her situation. She kind of did it on her own. So that was a nice little twist, something different than your typical Cinderella story. I mean, I can't really say too much because it's only 20 pages long. So I imagine when I was at the correct age for this book, I might have enjoyed it. There is some pretty heavy ableism in there, obviously from her step family, but I guess you kind of expect that. They even go as far as to puncture a tire on her wheelchair, so she cannot go to the ball. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I, um, I mean, it was okay. I guess for a kid's book that's really all I can say without giving away the entire story. I think I'm gonna pick up The Girl From Everywhere next by Heidi Helig because it's the only physical book that I have for this readathon. The only other book I'm gonna have to read on my iPad again because I'm getting the ebook from Scribd so I want to take a break from that for a little bit so I think I'm gonna move on to a physical book next. Plus that one, I think there's an audiobook on script. I like to listen while I read, read along. Plus I've been getting back into uh, embroidering. So my new favorite thing is to listen to an audiobook while I do some embroidering. So. about 30 pages into The Girl From Everywhere. I'm not loving it so far, but I mean, I've only read two chapters, so I guess that's understandable. Hopefully it gets better, but right now it's just kind of meh. So I got this new candle that smells absolutely amazing. It smells like summer. It's sweet, but it's not overly sweet, I guess because of the lemon. It's wonderful. So I'm gonna burn this new candle and I'm going to listen to more of The Girl From Everywhere and work on some embroidering for a little bit. Hopefully, keeping my mind busy will kind of help me relax into the story and like it a little bit better, but we'll see how it goes. Today was the day that I hosted my reading sprints on YouTube and it went well, although 
it almost didn't happen because there was a major disaster. I, I ended up, I wanted to do them outside because it's so pretty outside. And so I was getting my stuff together, getting ready to take them outside. And I didn't notice that a cord on my computer had wrapped around my chair. So when I backed up, it pulled the computer off my desk, hit my foot, landed on the ground, and I'm home alone. Or I was home alone. So I'm like, oh no. Because at this point it was about 2.15 and the readathon, or not the readathon, the reading sprints was supposed to start at 3 o'clock. So I had like 45 minutes to figure out what I'm going to do. Because my laptop is on the floor. That's what I need to stream with. I was like, uh oh. So I got on my phone and I got, opened the app to YouTube and I tried to see if I could stream from my phone, but of course I can't because I don't have the minimum requirements to do so yet. I was like, okay, so I can't do it from the app. So then I decided maybe I will try and download Chrome, the web browser, and try and just do it through the web rather than the app, but it still would not work. <laughs> so at this point it's like 2.30 and I have no idea what I'm going to do. I can't host something that I've committed to hosting. I was like, okay, well, I'll have to let the host know. So I logged on to Twitter and I was in the middle of typing a message to the host of the readathon, letting them know, like, I'm going to have to cancel or reschedule or do something because it's not happening. And right when I was in the middle of texting or typing, that message, somebody came home. They pulled up through the driveway. I was like, oh, yes, save the day. So I had about 10 minutes to spare to get everything set up and outside, but it did go well. I had a lot more people show up than I expected, seeing how as I expected zero people, but all in all, it was good. So we read for like an hour. I've read for an hour. I got through 50 pages of The Girl From Everywhere, and I'm still not loving it. It's definitely not my favorite of the month so far. The only thing that's really interested me is just now happened, and that's that a tiny sea dragon has been introduced. <laughs> that's it. That's the only thing I actually really like about this book. But I'm only a little over 100 pages in, so I'm going to give it a little bit more. I'm not disliking it enough to DNF it yet, but we'll... We'll see how it goes. So I finished The Girl From Everywhere a couple of days ago. And I never did really start to like it. I didn't dislike it enough to stop reading it. Obviously, I finished it. But it's just nothing really happened in the book. Like it was, I, I guess there was a plot, but... It all ended up being for nothing and it just, I don't, it just wasn't satisfying, I guess. There did eventually end up being a little bit of a disability representation with blindness, but it wasn't, it wasn't in a main character of the story. It was told through... Oh man, what is her name? Do I even remember her name? <laughs> Nix. There we go. Her name was Nix. And she was 16, and she felt like a 16 year old, which I guess is good in a way but it was also kind of annoying she was very some parts of her were very immature especially considering the kind of life that she's lived you you would expect her to be a little bit more mature in certain areas like they had this plan to steal something that they needed in a house during a party and one of her shipmates of course was in on it he's a thief and they also, they were friends and they kind of have sort of like a love interest sort of relationship that's not fully there, but you know, there's that flirting and thinking about it. And he was with 
the owner of the house, the wife of sort of, you know, off in a room by themselves. And she got a little offended and I guess didn't really understand that clearly it was part of the ploy of why they were there to begin with. And she kind of pitched a fit about it. And it was a really, really annoying, even though clearly he was there doing that because she had asked him to do that in a way. Like not necessarily be with another woman, but get what they needed <laughs> in the room where they needed it. That's, that's where it was. It's little things like that. It was set in Hawaii. So it was really pretty scenery that was described. It was before it became part of the US when it was still a sovereign nation. So the setting was really pretty and nice, but overall I really just, I didn't like it really. So, meh. I will say for this book, uh, the, while the disability graph isn't big, there is a lot of multicultural characters here. We have people from, of course, many different time periods as this is a time traveling story but also from many different countries. We have people from China, we have people from Sudan and uh, Iran, all kinds of cultures kind of mixing in. So that part of it actually is really nice. But other than that, that's it. Even the sea dragon that I mentioned briefly was only there for a short time and it really didn't play that big of a role. <laughs> so that was extra disappointing. I definitely, it's a duology and I definitely have no intentions of finishing the second book. And I have started last night my last book in for this readathon, which is The Last Leaves Falling by Fox Benwell. I'm about 50 pages in. This follows a another teenager, a young boy. He's 17 and he has been recently diagnosed with ALS. And typically ALS doesn't present until much later in life. And so it's unusual for somebody his age to show symptoms. And once you start showing symptoms, typically your decline is pretty rapid. You know, only have a few years left to live. So he is exploring that. This is set in Japan. So it is in a foreign country. And so he is still in high school although he's not attending school. And I'm not entirely certain if it's because he's choosing not to be at school because he doesn't want people looking at him or fearing, feeling sorry for him because he's gotten to the point where he has to be in a wheelchair. Or if it's because he can't go to school. Uh, again, I obviously I'm speaking as an American with disability where I have a right to go to school, and I don't know how that is in Japan. It is set in modern times, so I, I, I don't know which is the case here, because they also mentioned that he could enroll in a special school for children with disabilities, both physical and intellectual, but he really does not want to do that, so I'm not sure if he's doing homeschool because he wants to or because he has to. But in any case, he is exploring his life now that he has this diagnosis and he has started, he's joined this website for teenagers to kind of, I guess, get some friends without ever having to really leave his house and, you know, kind of hide behind his computer in a way. So that's really all that's happened so far. Uh, it's been a pretty easy read. So I've gotten through 50 pages pretty quickly. So hopefully, this one will be better than the last one. <laughs> Sweet boy. Are you sleeping? Did I wake you up? Yeah. So I finally, I've been looking for a lamp for a while. Number one that I could afford because lamps are expensive. <laughs> and two that I can actually use and turn on and that I liked. So I found this one that actually met all three requirements. 
and so I can use it. It's got a push button and not like a twisty knob thing. And I like it and it was affordable, but it's a clear lampshade, which looks good. But when I'm at my desk and the light is turned on, I'm pretty much eye level with the bulb and it's very, very bright. <laughs> like it kind of hurt. So I'm going to get some like frosted glass spray and see if I can help diffuse that light a little bit because I looked into getting a new lampshade, but they are either as much or more than I paid for the whole lamp. So hopefully it'll work out and I'm showing you all this messy stuff and our recycling, but whatever. Okay, well, I only had to read three more pages to answer my question and yeah, it's not because he doesn't want to go to school. It's because the school will not let him go. Uh, apparently, he was allowed to continue after his diagnosis while he could still walk and manage through the hallways. But three months later, when he had to be put in his chair instead of using crutches, the school refused to make adaptations. We must never, ever forget our many privileges. Saturday, April 24th. So I finished it a couple of days ago and, but I really kind of needed to sit with it for a minute before I kind of could give you my final thoughts on it. So I did, I've had, you know, a day or so to think about it. And I still, I did overall really did enjoy the book. I think that it's probably my favorite read of this month. It's not a five-star read. I haven't had a single five-star read this whole month, but four stars, I think it was pretty solid. This is a YA novel, and it really does hit on some pretty heavy topics. Its main focus, other than living with a disability, is dying from a disability, and, you know, the right to choose to die with dignity or to choose when you die if you are in fact going to die from a fatal illness or disease which is exactly what Sora our main character has and will die from ALS and I I have mixed feelings I absolutely agree that he should be able to choose when he dies and how he dies if he is in fact going to be dying anyway because of some disease that he can't hold off or you know stop in any way but the way he did it i don't this isn't going to give anything away because the synopsis of the book is sora makes friends to try and help him die <laughs> so it's not a a spoiler when I tell you this, but he does end up dying, but he can't do it without the help of his friends. And that's the part that kind of, I'm like, uh, I think he should be able to choose, but it should be a legal thing in a hospital where you have signed away everything and all of that, not expect your friends to kill you essentially and now we don't get to know how they handle it the rest of their lives we don't know what becomes of his friends or his mother after he makes this decision so it's not necessarily his choice that i have a problem with it's just that how he 
essentially was forced to do it that way in order to get what he wanted because it's not always legal and I don't know the legal status of it in Japan but you know assisted suicide is only legal in well like one or two states in the U.S. maybe so in order for him to do that he had to enlist the help of other people and they are essentially murdering him I mean it's I know he's choosing it, but it's them doing it. So it's kind of, oh, I don't know. It, it's very uneasy feeling of the ending. And I know it was meant to be that way. And it most certainly was. So I did enjoy it. It was very impactful. And I say enjoy as I'm watching a young boy die, but it was very impactful. And I think it is a good, story for young people to read just to open their eyes up to you know disability and everything that comes with it. I am gonna go ahead and use this vlog as also my April wrap-up because I don't see myself finishing any more books by the time this month ends. Of the f how many books did I read? <laughs> four? Yeah four books. So of the four books I read I only panned one of those books. So that brings my total of unread books down to 13. I thank you so much for being here, especially if you have made it this far. And I hope that you enjoyed it enough so that I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.